Hello, I'm Wanda Wen. Thank you so much for coming to the Sulip Fix today. I thought I would share with you ideas on how to curate and put together a um, an archive album to celebrate a significant occasion in one's life. Specifically, um, I'm going to present this album that I created for my son, Dag, upon his um, senior year graduation from college from UC Santa Barbara. I get lots of uh, requests at Sulip to for assistance in helping put together albums and what to put in there and and how to you know how to put it all together so that it's cohesive and that it's interesting and that it has movement. So let's begin. Um, I, I'm starting with. Uh, I generally love to use an album that is has great surface. Like this happens. This is a 13 by 13 inch album, and put my glasses on so I could see. The reason why I like 13 by 13, uh, 13 by 13 inch squares is that it just allows for um, you to put, let's say an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, which is a pretty common, you know, standard size. And so if you have eight and a half by 11 and you've got this, this size album, it it fits nicely and it allows for space around. So that's why I like this size album. And as you'll see, you can see that it gives you places to move and place photographs so they're not all squished together and that they have room to breathe, okay? This was for Dag. And so this is all about Dag. So <laughs> you'll get to know him just a little bit. So I started out with a sort of tribute picture to him and this sort of starts the journey. So think of your album as a journey, right? A journey from start to finish and um, that it tells a story, okay? And just also keep in mind that nothing is right or wrong. You know, ultimately this piece of, um, you know, this piece of art that you're creating is full of love and so anything you know anything will look amazing and anything will be amazing especially for you taking the time to do this for your loved one they will appreciate this so much anyways take what i'm saying as inspiration for your own creative dynamic all right so i started out with um, a, a picture of him first just to set the tone and then it goes into his grand you know his grandparents and um, you will see as I go through this book that I'm not always interested in filling the entire page with photographs. Eyes and visual, you know, one thing that, that um, creates beauty is also just negative space. So, you know, there's, there's a photograph of um, Dag's grandparents, my Nana and Papa, that um, is a beautiful photograph on its own. I think it's enough just to stand on its own. So I just put it in the center, all right? And then here is uh, just a sample of different size photographs. And so I really encourage you to think about photographs as art pieces, and they don't need to all be the same. So for instance, you know, I want to encourage you to use four by six photographs and maybe some three by five photographs and maybe even smaller ones, right? What I also love doing is when you have a photograph that let's just say um, is, you know, something like this, that is, you know, there's like two small figures and then you have this sea of image. Well, you can go ahead and cut this out because, watch, I'll show you. So I'm just gonna use my cutting mat, a straight edge and an X-Acto blade. But look at this photograph. So here you see it, it's, um, you know, it's a normal photograph. This is actually of Dag and my dearest friend Elizabeth in the south of France together um, for my 40, 40th birthday. But you can take a photograph and augment it by changing the shape, okay? So it requires you looking at the photograph, determining 
you know, what you love about the photograph and creating this new shape, which actually changes the whole nature of it. Okay, so I love this photograph of the two of them. And there's nothing wrong that it is, you know, in this sea of expansive picture, but I also love the idea of focusing the eye a little bit just on the the subject matter itself. Oh, let's see. Okay, so I'm basically trimming around the area. And you will see once I'm done that it's creating this new aesthetic. Okay, so basically I use a sharp X-Acto blade and a straight edge. I like using straight edges that are metal versus plastic because with plastic, when you use a straight edge, sometimes, you know, you might actually nick it and then that straight edge in plastic won't be straight anymore. So I really encourage uh, straight edges with, uh, made of metal. Okay, so this is what you have. Right? So can you see how it just changes the whole nature of this photograph? And then this could be, I mean, this would be great just on its own in a sea of white so that when you have this here, we'll take this, for instance, if this were a page, just imagine, or maybe you had it on the lower um, right-hand corner so that your eye has this, this expansive um, space and then it hones in into this little piece, okay? So I encourage you to look at your photographs in that way and not always be uh, relegated to using what comes from the photo developers. So what I, what I had requested from, you know, all of the important people in Dag's life, grandparents, siblings, our, our wider family circle and, you know, dear friends and family, people that he's grown up with, for sure, um, teachers, significant teachers, any mentors, those are the people that you want to access because those are the people who have been a part of his life and a part of his growing years and have been significant in his life. This little envelope is, um, it is filled with extra photographs that um, his Nana had sent and this is another design point when you're creating an archive album like this don't feel like you need to use all the photographs because sometimes it's nice like I said to have space and not that you want to throw the photographs away but you could always just take an envelope okay so have a set of envelopes that you can just mount on a page and then you can put extra photographs right super easy and just simply glue stick on the back and mount it so that what happens is this book all of a sudden becomes interactive and fun it, it's fun for the person who's looking at it um, it's fun for them to look at because they're using not only their eyes but their touch and their and their hands so I put his um, birth announcement in here um, so sweet. I just look at this and even though he's 23 years old now, this um, is so special. So I put that in here because that's really the start of his life. And then there's some extra pictures that were uh, given and sent to us by his Nana. And then there's a letter from her, okay, on her stationery that I made her many, many years ago, okay? So one thing I love about letters and handwritten letters, I find them so special. And I look at this letter that Nana wrote to Dag and I recognize her personality. I recognize her handwriting and handwriting is something that we're seeing less and less of and they're not teaching that at school, which is I think a big sin. But I, um, I just really encourage people to continue handwriting and for parents to instill in their kids to handwrite, know how to handwrite. To me, the handwritten words are really physical manifestation of one's heart. And you don't get the same aesthetic um, or the same feeling that you get when you're texting, typing on an email. It's just something so 
uh, inherently humane about handwriting. So use envelopes as, a, uh, uh, as an element to be able to store and include things that maybe you don't want to mount on a page because they're so special or because maybe you have too many photographs for this particular page and you don't want to use them all, okay? Be, you know, be, this happens to be a picture of my side of the family. This was a um, uh, reunion about two years ago or three, maybe three years ago, um, all of my father's side from China and there's a ton of us here. And so I decided to make this photo large because there's so many people here. So feel free to take photographs where you feel like you need the space um, and you need the enlargement to capture whatever is in the photographs. And here, since there's so many people, I thought it'd be nice to create this you know, large photograph. All right. This particular album has these interleaving protective sheets. I like them. They do, you know, they do tend to over time start bending and creasing because of uh, use. That's okay. That's going to happen. Um, that's the nature of paper. So, and here you see uh, another pocket situation where I actually used a decorative paper. You know, I love to. Um, keeping my paper scraps, right? I don't throw away scraps. So this is one area that I just have lots of scraps and I created a pocket so that I can include um, more photographs. So this has more images for Dag from my, you know, from my side of the family. My father of him has a, a little kid. This is probably back in 1940 and um, Anyways, lots of family history. I made one, uh, you know, one list of all the people that I wanted to include in this book and sent a group email to everyone, uh, encouraging them and asking them if they would be a part of this album. So, you know, people, even though it takes time, um, it, is, it is something that uh, those people that are important in one's life will want to be a part of. So don't ever feel like you're bugging them because ultimately it is, um, it's a very special thing to be part of a, a book like this. So this is a card that my, my parents wrote to Dag. It's in Chinese. I actually don't know what it says, which is sad, <laughs> but I, she told me and I can, I can ask her again. So I made this little pocket to include that letter. You know, even though some of the letters, um, actually most of the letters that I received, like people that hand wrote the letters, I actually keep them in the envelopes because I think there's something very special about this. You know, you see the handwriting, you see the handwriting of the person that wrote to Dag and um, you know, how they address it. I just think there's something lovely about it. And then you also, instead of mounting this on the, on the page, it allows, the viewer to take it out um, and be a part of uh, the experience of opening a letter. So I encourage you to keep letters in envelopes and then tucking them into a pocket. So here, here is a, a, um, a sample of just a page um, using white space. And then this was a piece of, you know, this was a photograph that was like a, probably a four by six that I honed in and trimmed the edges and I used photo corners. So you can mount photo corners really in a couple ways, you know, glue stick, super easy. You know, you can buy these glue sticks at any stationer or office supply store. You just simply um, glue the backs or you can use photo corners. I love using photo corners because there's a, there's a sense of nostalgia with them and they come in, um, you know, several colors. Black, I love using black because it reminds me of yesteryears. I love white as well. Gold is nice and then sometimes you'll find colors like here's red. I know that there's, you know, sage green, there's um, turquoise blue out there. I love using the classic colors. And these are really simple to use. These are self-adhesive and I, and I love using those versus the kind that you have to lick and moisten with your um, moisture in your mouth or water. But these are self-adhesive. You can see that they're sticking to my finger. So you have to be, uh, you know, just a little bit, um, 
ginger with them. So <clears throat> my trick is to just apply them into all four corners first. And sometimes, right? So apply them on all four corners. And then once they're nestled in, right? Then you can mount it to a page. I'm not gonna mount it on this because this is already done, but then, then it makes it easy to mount on a page, okay? And if I were to, let's say, go back and maybe, you know, someone sent their photographs late or uh, maybe you found a photograph that, that you decide that you want to be part of this book, you can always do that. And because you've also created this book where you maybe have had some space, this, like, I could see this photograph being placed right here, for instance, and it sort of creates an artful shape. So I'm not gonna do that, but that's, that's just something that you can do, okay? So, um, this page is basically a collage of a letter that was written to Dag by his Aunt Nancy. And, and then I uh, just worked three photographs that she had sent. She wanted these photographs um, next to her letter. When you send out a request to the group of people that you want to receive from, you request a, um, a letter or a card and also some images that you would like to be mounted in the book. So the thing about letters is um, Sometimes you will have people writing them and handwriting them and then um, sending them in, which is lovely. Other times you will have people that want to email, all right? Totally fine. So what I encourage you to do is, like for instance in this case, the email was fairly short and with any email, and, and when you're printing something, it prints on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Well, these like six lines would look very small uh, and diminutive on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So go ahead and just trim it out and make that a, um, a star piece and then flank it with photographs on the top and bottom. This is my brother and this is his contribution to this album, okay? Um, I also encourage you, and some people will actually do something creative. This was done by my sister, Wendy, and she created something. I just had it printed at Staples. They have great printing capabilities, and they you can request a card, like having it printed on cardstock. So this was printed on cardstock, and I just simply mounted this on the page. Okay? This is, this is my... Uh, daughter, so Dag's sister Simone, this was her contribution. And um, I used white photo corners. I thought that they looked great against the black and white. I put the four of them on in a um, sort of a unique pattern. And I realized that, you know, I really wasn't totally happy with it. To me, it looked a little bit lopsided. So I just added a little jewel here just to uh, give it a little bit more weight on the lower right hand corner. And now I think it looks balanced. Okay. And then this little thing, you turn the page, and so she sent a letter, and she sent a letter, and it was um, just beautifully stitched, but I wanted to show this to you. So <laughs> this, is, um, this is another thing that you can do to add fun. So there's a picture of her that really is, it's not her most beautiful self, but it actually is super funny, and it's kind of an inside joke between her and her brother Dag. But when you take out this letter, then there's this, you know, funny picture. And I think it's nice to add humor and inside jokes into this that you're creating. So this is a letter that she wrote to Dag and it's hand stitched. So it's two pages, actually it's four pages she wrote on, but it's hand stitched. She used colors um, on a simple cream paper, but it's hand stitched in um, like a little wool yarn. So super sweet. And um, I also included a few extra photographs that she wanted, and it was gonna be too much to put on this spread. And so basically tuck this into an envelope, and this is her, this is her contribution, okay? And 
This is another way, a super fun way to use photographs. You know when you're taking photographs, sometimes you have like, you know, usually you have like a series of photographs and they, they're all sort of in the same setting and maybe it tells a story and sometimes you click on your photograph that, you know, it's like, you know, Shutterstock. Well, this is basically taking four by six photographs, but basically trimming them down so that they're thin, so that they create a, um, um, sort of a, I don't know, it, it's, to me it almost looks like movie film, like a movie reel. So this is all of us being super funny when we were young. Grant, me, Simone, um, we haven't grown, and we didn't shrink, these are, were on our knees actually. <laughs> so, and it's, it's really, it's also a, I'm gonna remove, remove this for a second. It's also nice to, let's say you have a photograph that is the, of the same person, but in different, doing different things. It's nice to actually show that in unison so it almost looks like it's moving, right? So think about that too as just a design point. And so basically taking, you know, taking an entire spread for devoted to that one person, all right? This is a um, contribution by someone who's a photographer and she sent this original photograph, Cara Weston, who is the granddaughter of Edward Weston. So I didn't want to mount this and um, mount this permanently on the book. So basically, she sent this in a clear cellophane so that it's protected, so that maybe one day he may want to frame this permanently in something. So I didn't want to mount this. Um, and <clears throat> basically using photo corners. And there's the letter of uh, that she wrote to Dag on the back, and that's mounted, and then I put this on the front so that this piece, which is a valuable piece of art, is protected. And then he can do what he wishes with that, okay? So that's how this was presented. So here's another sample of, in the same setting, but four different images, and he's doing different things, and trimming the, you know, trimming the photographs so they're not all four by six and which to me can be a boring size because it's so ubiquitous. But trimming this, like I showed you earlier in this video, just trimming it so that it is more focused on the image itself, okay? So definitely have fun when you're looking at photographs. Um, and know that you don't need it, it doesn't need to be conventional. This is a card that was made by a dear friend of mine and I, you know, I ended up just mounting the back and allowing the viewer to be able to open the card, okay? So that there's movement. This was really super sweet. So when you send out an email um, asking people to contribute, you can always, I've had some clients who will, uh, you know, find paper from Sulip, like decorative paper, and send them the paper so that people have, you know, people can write on it or they can print digitally on that paper. Um, or, in this case, someone used um, just the, the back of it or the inside of a Trader Joe's bag and wrote this entire prose and it's just so lovely. So this is a way that you can mount something that is larger than a page itself. So see what I did is um, I basically folded it in half and I mounted only one side so that, you know, that DAG or the user can flip it up and read the whole thing, okay? So just a, another creative way to mount. And if you are gonna send paper, I encourage you to find different kinds of paper because it'll make this project more fun. It'll be more beautiful. You know, whether it's um, paper that's, this is a simple cream paper, but it's got deckled edges. Super, it's just a sign of a handmade paper. Or maybe you wanna send some colored papers, sage green or a salmon color. Okay, this is, a, this is a fun paper. It's actually a vellum that has a print on it. I don't know if you can see, it's got like a dotted print on it. So if you're gonna send paper to the people that you're asking for requests from, it doesn't need to all be the same paper. In fact, I encourage you um, that it be different. This is another, you know, this is a page that I love. It is, um, you know, it was an emailed message to DAG 
by one of my dear friends and someone that Dad works with occasionally, David Pressman of David Pressman Events. And there's this great picture of uh, Dag and David and Simone, my daughter, and they were working in a, uh, a wedding event. And it's just a brilliant photograph. So because this was small, you know, I made this into an eight and a half by 11. It's just a, it's just a fun piece. So imagine if this were a four by six photograph and the difference between a four by six photograph, which is this size, and the eight and a half by 11, just see how much more vibrant it is. So I encourage you to really look at photographs and determine if something may be more enhanced if it's larger or enhanced if it's smaller, like I showed you that little guy. I can't find it. Anyways, okay. And this is um, Dag's dear girlfriend, Sage. And you will find that people will take the time that they wanna do their own sort of collage and so um, she took it upon herself to get a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of paper and actually take photographs and cut them out and mount them on a um, on a, a base so that really all I did was mounted on this paper and then she has created control of her page okay so and so that, that brings me to another uh, point that I wanted to make. Let's just say you have a picture like this, right? And maybe you want, maybe you don't want it to be four by six because you want to, you know, just have a little bit more fun. You can always just take the shape of whoever is in here and maybe you want to just trim along their perimeter. And that totally takes the image and creates a whole different thing, all right? And then you can use this. So it's another way that you can add creativity on a page so it's not just all blocks, all right? So that is, I mean, there's a lot in here, but basically those are the, um, you know, those are the points that I wanted to make. I ended it with uh, a great picture of Dag. He was graduating or uh, uh, in his graduation um, outfit. And then, um, let's see, and then the last picture is him as a little boy, little baby actually. And I mounted a sweet flower, because that's how I feel about him. <laughs> I mounted a sweet flower, uh, just one um, on this page, because sometimes um, less is more. In fact, always, to me, less is more. And that's it. So those are just some points that I want to offer you about creating a, um, an archive album for a graduation or really any significant moment in one's life, like you know, significant birthdays. This is a great, you know, this is a great gift. And this will be the most treasured gift of any gift that that person receives, truly. All right, thank you so much. Um, that's the Sulip Fix for today, and please comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.